and because I forgot, uh, SubGV Dark Matter Searching with Edelweiss. Thank you, Jules. Okay, well, thanks for the invitation. And um, so uh, the uh, topic will be these uh, dark matter searches that we're performing with uh, germanium bolometers. And uh, first, I will talk about the motivation for searching for low mass WIMPs with such detectors and talk about our program. And uh, I will also discuss the, some recent results we have in our, uh, in our way uh, into uh, getting our, our full fledged one kilogram experiment for low, spe specifically for low mass detectors. So the, um, I have to make sure that I have to switch. Okay, so in the domain of uh, direct search of dark matter, there was recently a, a big opening of a new range of masses of interest uh, due to the fact that uh, supersymmetry was not discovered at, at LHC and, and also uh, the uh, noble gas experiment are quite efficiently starting to fill the entire space space of all such particle above the neutrino background. But in the, the range of the GEV to below this, uh, there's the need to, um, to try to look for dark matter that would not come from the standard WIMP uh, neutralino-like scenario, but different uh, theories. And also there, was a, there are lots of uh, experimental development in, in trying to reduce the thresholds of current generation detectors. And that led to new experiments that were able to address this, this vast domain that was not yet um, addressed. So when you talk about sub-GEV, it's quite a wide range, not only of masses that we can look for, but also type of dark matter. Uh, in this, uh, in this uh, display, you go from the EV to the TEV. Uh, we leave alone the TEV range for the noble gas experiment that are quite uh, Im impossible to beat in that region. And then we can focus on regions that are a bit orphan where uh, due to uh, the possibility of having very low threshold in uh, solid state detectors, uh, one of the range of interest is going below the GV uh, because uh, dark matter at the GV scale is something that sometimes ap appears in uh, asymmetric dark matter model. There the signal is you have a nuclear recoil as a signal in your detector. Now, the challenge there is that you are pushing for the lowest range possible and, in pres and also, if you want to have uh, the possibility of discriminating nuclear and electron recall, uh, it's very difficult to do that because you have very small signal. Uh, another thing to notice is that this range around the, uh, the GEV is also interesting if you, uh, if you think of other experiments that are trying to do, use bolometer technique in order to have uh, studies of uh, the coherence scattering of neutrino and nucleons at reactors. And for instance, the Edelweiss experiment is also benefiting from a strong synergy with the uh, Ricochet project, which is looking at reactor neutrino that, that are um, equivalent to 2GV uh, uh, neutrino, uh, 2GV WIMP particles, except that now we want to push that uh, below the GEV. Now the threshold, the, the challenges will be of course to push the threshold as low as you can. Other challenge is that there's um, all the current running experiment uh, are lacking uh, electron recoil, nuclear recoil discrimination because the signals are so small that you cannot perform an efficient discrimination. So that's a challenge to try to find ways to extend the discrimination in this new domain. And, and the other challenge is that the, uh, the uh, response to nuclear recoil in the ionization is unknown in germanium and silicium. You have measurements that need to be confirmed because there, there seem to be a bit some inconsistency between the behavior of germanium and silicium at, at low mass. So these are things that need to be addressed if you want to go down 
in mass. But it's not only nuclear recoil that we want to look for, because in the, there are interesting theories where, uh, for instance, in uh, dark sector models, where the coupling of the dark part matter particle with the normal particle is done via the, the uh, via uh, dark sector photon that couples the normal photon, then you will have um, you can have models that make sense in, 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 in terms of uh, cosmology that uh, the so-called, uh, these are the so-called benchmark, model, benchmark model. And these for these model, the dark matter particle has a mass uh, that can be in the MeV to GeV range. And especially around the MeV range, you, uh, you could if, uh, actually have a, a a good coverage of all these benchmark model with an experiment that would have one kilogram of of, um, of detector mass. It could be silicon or germanium. There were studies done in the in the in the snow mass uh, in 2016, uh, showing that uh, with a theoretical detector with one kilogram and and, and a negligible background, you could be able to to cover all these. Uh, the signal where the signal is just an electron recoiling from the collision from a, a, a WIMP. Uh, so this is the dark matter electron scattering searches. And uh, there the challenge are not only that you want to push a threshold as low as you can uh, uh, down to a single electron in order to be to benefit from the fact that uh, solid state detector have minimum energy of the order of one EV in order to uh, to uh, get uh, out an electron, a signal of an electron. But also that now the signals is are electrons, and this is a much tougher background because you don't have particle rejection, and usually this this background is is higher and harder to to fight. And once you are looking for a signal with electron and trying to reduce your electron recall background, something you get more or less for free is you can, you're able to test model where the dark photon is itself the dark matter particle. And then you detect it because it's entirely absorbed by an electron in your detector. Uh, this is a difficult search because you have to be more optimum than the astro uh, astrophysics constraints. But the, the studies were made uh, that uh, one kilogram year experiment with single electron uh, capability, silicon or germanium, could be interesting. Uh, this is also interesting because you test directly uh, when you want to assess the, the performance of your, of your detector. It's a, a good channel because the signal is a monoenergetic peak in your detector at very low energy with just one electron signal. And, uh, and there, what could be interesting for germanium experiments is that in principle, the, the threshold for the, the reach is lower in, in mass because of a lower gap and uh, excitation energy needed to create an electron hole pair. But there, uh, you, you may immediately realize that in order to do that, you need to have a detector uh, massive detector where the uh, typical current you are you want to have in order to have a bag an almost backgroundless experiment is of the order of, of uh, 10 to the minus 26 ampere uh, amps per kilogram which is quite low and uh, and this is this looks feasible in silicon devices where the uh, all the, the development in, in getting low noise silicon detector, have progressed uh, a lot. And the question is, uh, can you do that in germanium, uh, which is a, detect a material that has been less tested in, in terms of, of such performance? So these are the additional challenges for such kind of, of uh, uh, experiment. And then an additional thing you can do with a detector uh, able to do all the above is that you can also try to be sensitive to what is called the Migdal effect, where the nuclear recoil is also accompanied with an electron recoil. It's a three body uh, scattering. And um, the advantage of this channel is that uh, you can have a um, 
the, en the typical energy of, of the electron which is emitted can be of the order of 100 or a few tens of EV. And um, that's a signal uh, that, that can be extracted uh, from your detector. And it's, it's uh, much more, it's uh, a small branching ratio for this, uh, to, for this channel but it has much more energy and if you have a, it's easier to get a signal above the threshold. So the, uh, there the experimental challenges are not that much the threshold because the signal is relatively high in energy, but one could say that you, it would be very nice to have an experimental confirmation of these effects and also that you are fighting against your background of electrons. So this is the kind of physics you want to do with, uh, we want to do with Edelweiss. And now the, the Edelweiss subject program is, uh, is to try to get into that, that region. So on this plot where you have the cross section as a function of math, you see that what we want to do is to get inside the, the, the region of uh, typically of the uh, 10 to the minus 43 centimeter square and, and below one GeV, which is slightly below the reach of future experiment like super CDMS and crest uh, phase three. And, but what we want to do is to try to get there with, uh, 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 while keeping as much as we can the discrimination of, of, uh, of nuclear, and, uh, nuclear and electron recoil. And for this, we've seen that what we want to have as performance is that we want to have the, that the heat channel, the resolution of typically 10 EV and the ionization uh, resolution has to be a 20 EV and that would make it possible to reach that kind of, of region with a one and with a one kilogram size experiment or so you could start to get interesting results with a small detector you'd be able to do um, as good as the big arrays that are planned. Now in order to, to achieve that the reason why it was not achieved so far well in, in the case of Edelweiss is that our you, up to now, we had large detector that were stuck uh, with resolution of many hundreds of EV, uh, which is uh, more than an order of magnitude larger than, than, than what we want in to, to achieve this goal. And also the ionization uh, resolution was a factor of 10 larger than what we want. In, and ionization is very important in order to get the, the particle uh, identification. But we, uh, we've identified that with, with cold head preamplifiers and smaller detector, we would be able to reach uh, both goals in terms of resolution for phonon and for ionization. And um, so uh, we've, we've recently, in the, in the last few years, we've been able to, to uh, get uh, more than two, uh, two order of magnitude uh, improvement in our uh, resolution of the detector. And that's mainly by reducing the, the size, which is not just a question of having, it's easier to measure a, a temperature rise uh, in a small detector because it, because it has a smaller heat capacity, but also it has, a, we want to have a, a detector with the smallest possible uh, electrical capacitance in order to get the, this uh, 20 EV ionization resolution. So in terms of these, these are the general goal and two important milestones in our path toward this, these goals is uh, we successfully demonstrated that we could get the uh, with, with within range of the 10 EV phonon resolution uh, uh, in an experiment that was called a device surf for surface. And I will talk about it later. And then, um, but on top of that, we, we think that it's important in order to really have a good handle on the backgrounds and optimize the physics reach of the experiment. It's important that, that we should be able to uh, uh, apply AI voltage to amplify the heat signal. And, um, and this, uh, on this aspect also, the, 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 we had a recent result I will dis discuss. Uh, as exemplified with a uh, search for electron dark matter scattering in a 30 gram detector that we performed just been published more recently. 
So the starting point for added vice before going to lower detector was that our 800 gram germanium detector with interleave uh, um, electrodes had demonstrated that with such kind of, of detector, we, we could get a very nice discrimination, not only of electron recoil and nuclear recoil by using the, the ratio of ionization and heat signal as done in super CDMS and, and uh, CREST and, and, and E2. Uh, I will, will not go in the detail. I assume that you're familiar with the principle. But also with the interleave detector, we could define a, fit, a, a surface volume and a fiducial volume by applying a different set of detector and, and making some kind of grid, effective grid below the surface or, or detector and rejecting the first two millimeter of, of interactions uh, around the detector. And, and at the bottom right here, what we add is the, reject, uh, the, the surface event rejection we can get with such technology. So the detector with the interleaved electrodes are very good for particle identification, but that's limit that up to now that was limited by the poor, rather poor resolution that uh, uh, we could get out of our big detectors. And um, but one nice thing about uh, these detector where the electrode is just uh, evaporated on the surface, aluminum evaporated on the surface, is that. Um, it's quite easy to, uh, uh, to get a detector where you can apply high voltages. So when you apply on the electrode, you apply high bias. Uh, what happens is that the heat signal you get is amplified by the so-called Negaluf load amplification, which is also used uh, quite expertly by a super CDMS. And the idea is that while they are drifting the charge uh, while the charge are drifting in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the bias potential, they will get the, they will add uh, their heating to the heat signal and the amplification is proportional to the number of charge, which is, uh, which are the, the charge signal and, um, and also at times the, uh, the, the applied potential, applied bias. And this is this uh, factor. If you apply a, a bias 100 volts, you will get an amplification of a factor 33. And uh, we were quite pleased to see that our germanium detector were able to be operate at high voltage. We went all the way up to 100 volts on the big 100 grams. And indeed, we could see that by amplifying the signal uh, without uh, uh, serious noise degradation, we could see that we could improve the resolution. And here is, uh, uh, so by, one has to be careful that once you amplif amplify the signal, the heat signal using this effect, then what happens is that if the bias becomes very large, then what happens is that the heat signal is just, a, uh, it's a very good resolution, but pure copy of the ionization signal. So you, um, you lose, when you go to very high voltage, you lose the discrimination between the, uh, the electron recall and the, uh, and the nuclear recall. And this is shown uh, on the lower left here, where you see on the same detector in the neutron calibration, where you produce a lot of, of uh, nuclear recoil, uh, you have the band of nuclear re re recall in the middle of a band of, well, of, of events without ionization, and then the, the band of electron recall, where by definition, the, the detector is calibrated in KEV electron equivalent, and therefore the signal for in heat and ionization is the same. And that's for 8 volt, and get, when you go to 80 volts, then you will get a much better resolution. You, you, you here we, we were able to zoom this, this figure by a factor of five and you see that the noise blob is, is pushed down to uh, a few, uh, to be below uh, 200 EV on this detector. But the, the price to pay is that the, the neutron band now is com has completely merged with the, the gamma band. So you can do a, a statistical analysis by operating the detector at low voltage and high voltage, uh, which is something we, we, we want to do, but uh, you lose the nice direct uh, discrimination of, of, um, 
of, of uh, that, uh, that that you can do at low voltage. And the question is, when you ask the question, what do you want to do? Well, of course, the, the reason, the, the best answer is I want to do both because where I'm not sure what kind of background I will have to fight. And with this technique, being able to operate detector at low voltage and high voltage, you, you, uh, you get the best of both worlds. You can have low threshold and, and, and for instance, when you're looking for signal like electron recall signal, then you, that's something you will want to do, operate the detector high voltage. But when you want to have, uh, it's very important to have a good discrimination between nuclear recall and electron recall, then you would rather operate these at low voltage and be, so you want, you want to keep this possibility of having these two techniques at the same time. So the strength of the detector, as I said, because the, the, uh, the heat sensor is a, just a NTD uh, thermistance glued on the surface of the detector, uh, and we've tested that this can hold uh, high biases, then it's easy to, uh, uh, to adapt our detector high voltage to high voltage uh, application. And uh, we know that if we, we keep a detector with some decent size, it, we, we, with the uh, interleave electrode design, we can get a clean internal uh, volume devoid of uh, surface events. But then if you want to have that, you mu must have you, your discrimination rely on ionization. You must have a good resolution and, and ionization. And these were the strong point, the bad, but the bad point of the Edelweiss 3 detector were that they didn't get the resolution needed to really get into the sub GV range. So for the, the goal for this, uh, the subject detector will be this, these two modes of operation where uh, you, in, you want to be able at low voltage to have this, uh, the nice nuclear to electron recall discrimination that we can have at low voltage uh, that we, we could get with a big detector with improved resolution, we could bring down this discrimination down to a fraction of, uh, to, well, to uh, below uh, 100 EV. And uh, if we want to have uh, lower threshold then, even lower threshold than what you want to be do, able to do is to operate the same detector, but now with high voltage. And uh, with this, you would be able to, uh, to start to have uh, such a good resolution that as CDMS has demonstrated with this technique, you can separate the one electron peak, two electron peak and so on and be able to identify the one electron per one per one. So these are the, the, the topics we're working on. Okay, so this is a slide showing that we've done simulation showing that it's, uh, it's, it's with a smaller detector, but lower threshold, it's, you, you, you can do as good as with larger detector, but uh, with threshold as they are. So that convinced us to go that way. And uh, so we have, basically four goals in, in, in ahead of us. The first one is the ionization resolution, improvement by a factor of 10. I will come to that uh, next slide. We want to push back the resolution to 10 EV. So far, uh, we have already have achieved 18 EV on a prototype on, on 33 gram that has been used for a physics paper. Uh, we want to operate the detector at 100 volts and that as that's something we already have achieved on even large detector. And then, but you also want to reduce the background at low energy because as all the other uh, bolometric experiment, we do see a rise of events at low energy as we, as we, uh, as I will show later, the same, um, the same phenomena, but probably not the same source. Well, it has to be understood where these events come from, but th that's also the kind of, of, uh, uh, of background that, which is uh, limiting the crest and uh, super CDMS experiment so far. We also have this problem and we need to address it in order to really reduce the background further. So for the, uh, the improvement in ionization, our program is just to uh, transition from uh, JFET at 100K uh, to an amplification of the signal with HEMT, a preamplifier, which will 
which can operate at 1K or 4K and therefore much closer in our cryostat. And uh, so less, so there's a possibility of uh, having a factor of 10 less stray capacitance. And also we have um, optimized the electrode design in order to have uh, less than 20 picofarad uh, 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 total impedance with cabling and detector. And with that, uh, it's possible to reach the 20 uh, picofarad, uh, sorry, the 20 EV uh, resolution. So basically seven electron pair resolution on a 33 gram detector. This program is going, is, 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 is going ahead. In fact, that's the solution that has been selected by the uh, Ricochet CryoCube collaboration for the study of uh, coherent scattering of neutrino accelerators. And we are doing this development. Uh, uh, it's the same people doing the development for Edelweiss and for, and, and for uh, Ricochet. Now, for the, the, for the heat, we've done ex extensive uh, development of, of smaller, we, we worked a lot on, on improving the resolution of our detector. It was not only a question of reducing the size, but also optimizing uh, the full design of how, what, what kind of NTD, what is the, the heat link and so on. And with that, uh, the, 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 the the key uh, measurement was that we used such a detector, which was just just heat only, just to, we were just optimizing the heat on this detector called Red Twenty, and on in a surface run we were able to achieve a resolution of eighteen eV, and with that we were able to uh, to uh, to get a threshold of uh, sixty eV uh, in recoil energy. And uh, with that, we perform a standard WIMP search and a standard uh, uh, amygdala search of, of uh, dark matter particles. And the interest of that is since we were in surface, we were probing a region uh, interesting for uh, strongly interacting massive particles. And, uh, but it, for us, it was the, the, the proof and principle that our detector were capable of, of, of going down to the 10 EV range uh, resolution in, in phonon resolution, which is what we need. Now, once that was done and published, the, the next step was to put an electrode on such a detector. Here's a picture of the detector. That's a 30 gram, 30, 34 gram detector. Uh, and on the center here, you see that's the, the thermistance, the NTD, which is glued on the center of the, of the detector. It's just glued and uh, it's glued on the electrode. Here, the electrode is an aluminum grid. Uh, it's a way to uh, reduce the, the, um, the uh, having a, a grid electrode as advantage, not only of reducing the, the, the capacitance, but more importantly, it, uh, it, um, it has less degradation of phonons when they bounce on the surface because you, 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 the, the phonons signal tend to be degraded when you have a, when it interacts with aluminum. So this detector was first tested on the surface. It, 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 gave, it, uh, it was the first one where we had put an electrode uh, on uh, such a detect on, on the small detector. But uh, it was not, the resolution was not 18, but more around 25, 26 EV. But that was uh, enough to, uh, to bring it in the deep underground site and uh, to try to see what, what, uh, what is the behavior of su such detector at high voltage. Now, it was important to, to see uh, what we were waiting for is, is, is was also uh, to have an assessment of how much leakage you can have because when you push your detector at, at, at very high gain then you start to, to uh, uh, you, you worry that you could produce leakage current that can completely kill your detector. Uh, in a silicon detector the leakage current is something which is very well controlled but in germanium devices especially massive like that 34 gram detector uh, that was a challenge to see whether uh, it was worth pursuing this technology. 
So this is just a, a slide on the Delvice 3 setup. It's uh, the same one that we use for our, uh, for, uh, our uh, 30, uh, let me calculate, 24 detector that says 20 kilogram array that we use uh, up to uh, 2014. Uh, but now we have just used it uh, for a few uh, for these de uh, de detectors and also we we, uh, we had friends that wanted to make a search uh, double beta decay uh, search with um, uh, cupid mo experiment so it was the same cooldown and uh, we just operated the detector now we we were able to have this detector cooled down for something like 14 months. In the end, the, the search we will see is not statistically limited. So it was a bit of a luxury being able to uh, have uh, months and months of data. But in, in fact, it was quite important to have a, um, a long exposure because what we wanted to make sure is that we understand perfectly the behavior of the detector for events in the bulk. In solid state detector, you have to be careful that uh, uh, at low energy, it's easy to calibrate them on the surface, but when you want to calibrate them deep inside the volume, it's, you cannot do that with external source. But uh, luckily in germanium, you can activate an isotope of germanium. Uh, you can activate germanium 17 to germanium 71 and create a, a triplet of line, one at 10 keV, the other one at 1.3, and the last one at 160 eV. And these lines decay with a, a period of, of um, 11 days. So uh, you can activate your detector quite strongly. And then if you are able to wait a lot, then you can reuse this, this detector, which must much less background. So what we've done is that uh, in order to, uh, to first study the detector, we activated the detector in November, 2018. And then up to uh, April, 2019, uh, we were able to perform a lot of studies using these very strong lines in order to understand uh, what is the behavior of the detector in the entire volume. And then when the activation was very weak, we, uh, in April, uh, we selected that period in order to do uh, uh, the, the dark matter search and to be sure that things were stable, then we reactivated the detector by bring, bringing a, stro a strong immersion beryllium source close to the detector and reactivated the detector and check that nothing had changed. So, um, this, and the sample of 10 kV event that was taken just after the search was used as reference event that we could, uh, we, we, we would store all the, the, the data continuously on, on disk. And therefore we were able to re-inject in the search data um, pulses of uh, fake pulses at low energy by taking 10 kV events that we know are events distributed evenly in the bulk. And then you re-inject these events uh, by scaling down to the, the, the given energy. And in that way, you, have, you are able to simulate in realistic uh, streams of events, the, the, the real the, the stream of events, even that you want to use for, for a search, you can uh, extract what is the real efficiency for whatever signal you want at low energy using these reference pulses scaled down. Uh, of course, we set aside some, some data in order to uh, test all these techniques and kept separately one, one sample for the final search. And uh, so this is the, the kind of calibration we were able to do in the first activation where you see the K, L and M lines and the L lines is at 160 V. And um, the this these plus show a little bit of what kind of performance we, we could see uh, on the left what you have is the noise spectrum hour by hour for the the data that was uh, just before and after the search period and uh, the signal template and uh, we that we had a very 
with Prum. Um, the plot on the right is the full width half maximum noise of the baseline uh, as a function of time. Uh, the data that we use to set up the cuts are the one in the, the two green regions just before and after the selected period. And you can see the decay at the beginning is that each time we ramp the, the detector, we have to wait for a couple, for some days in order for the noise to, to, to come back. So there are certainly a lot of, 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 of charge uh, displacements in the initial ramping up period. This is something we, we, we need to, uh, to study uh, in more detail. But being at LSM and having a lot of time, what we could do is just to wait for the baseline noise to calm down and, uh, and then uh, select, uh, set aside a, a, a period for search and two period for setting up the, the cuts. And the resolution in terms of phonon resolution of that detector was 42 EV. But when you take into account that we were able to ramp up this detector to 78 volts, then uh, that is equivalent to a 1.6 EV equivalent electron resolution or a fraction of just, uh, just above uh, half an electron resolution. So this is not enough to separate the peaks for uh, the one electron, two electron, and so on, but that's sufficient to probe what we really want to know with what the background looked like and what was the upper limit on that background and whether it was a showstopper for such experiment. Because um, with a resolution of half an electron, but having streams of data that you can test the, the efficiency on it with actual scaled down pulses that, that you inject uh, randomly throughout the, the stream, uh, we could measure quite accurately what was the, the response of the detector to one, two, three, and four, and so on, uh, electron signal. And of course, the one electron signal is, is strongly biased and, and overlaps a lot with the two electron signal. But from this, you can put an upper limit on what kind of noise you, you would get. And the efficiency for an event at 3 V, which would correspond to one electron, is just 4%. But that's since these search are not statistically limited, having a 4% resolution on a few days of data is not a problem. So the, um, this is the pre-unblinding data, where uh, what we want to, to make is just uh, get an idea of the sensitivity of the and, and put upper limits on, on signals and upper limits on background. So what the, the limits are just not set with a fancy likelihood. It's just you, you take the, 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 uh, the reference, the non-blind data, and using the, the, this data, you, you select what is the range which is the most constraining for uh, different type of signals. Here in black, you have the, the kernel smoothing of the, the, the data used for setting up cuts. And in the different colors are WIMPs with different masses. Sorry, dark matter signal uh, with particles from half an MeV to 100 MeV. And you can see that the signals, even all, all the way up to 100 MeV, uh, correspond to uh, a few electrons, so less than 20 EV um, signal. And uh, the, the, with, with this data you can play with, you can determine what is the uh, optimum window to set a Poisson limit. Basically, where does the theoretical curve touches plus, plus or minus the statistical uncertainty, the, uh, the, your, your data. And then once these windows were set, then we would apply that to the blind in data and just count how many events we had and set upper limits on rates for different type of, uh, of, uh, of signals. And so this is the non-blind data. Um, and uh, it's, again, we use the same search interval and we just do Poisson limit on what is the maximum number of count in these different windows. Um, so the, uh, the low 
the low energy, the 0.5 MeV is basically a one electron signal pulse. And you can see that this, this is, uh, this, this kind of signal is very close to noise blob. So right now what we have is just limits that are most probably dominated by electronic noise. But uh, nevertheless, this, this represents an upper limit of uh, six times 10 to the minus nine amp uh, current for a single electron current, which is uh, already uh, something uh, um, of interest. Now, in order to do this calculation of signal, we use a sand dark tool, the QE dark out of uh, ESIG and did the same charge quantization as used by Super CDMS and Sensei. Uh, and then, but put that in our pul complete pulse simulation. And these are kind of limits we're able to, to obtain. So again, this, this noise that we, we, that was blocking us was nevertheless, uh, uh, gave us better sensitivity than uh, the, uh, the experiments in the super CDMS high voltage where they do see the separate peaks and have more than a 4% efficiency. But uh, even though we're limited by our resolution, we could see that already in this germanium device, it was the first time that germanium was used with, with high voltage. And we could see that uh, germanium was already quite competitive in terms of, of uh, limits and in, in the number of few electron signal and, and, and leakage current. And uh, that really was a, a signal that we should go ahead and trying to, uh, to uh, optimize our detector and uh, go ahead with uh, de uh, better detector with uh, and, and solving problems we had seen. Uh, the detector was not able to, to get where we could get a better resolution by a factor of two uh, if one other detector and um, and also our bias was limited uh, at 78 volts for purely technical reasons so we have a good margin of of, um, of improvement there and what's interesting is that this result was used by a single block of 33 gram uh, which is an interesting aspect if you think about scaling up these detect these detector to a, a, a kilogram or even larger scale. So adding good performance on the large unit is, is, is good, is a good thing. Uh, this, the detector was, was at the time even uh, competitive with uh, silicon uh, detectors since then Sensei has, has, has uh, published uh, their more recent results where in fact they have a factor 25 less, well, their measurement of their current one electron current is a factor 25 lower than our upper limit, which is maybe probably, well, maybe limited by electric noise, but nevertheless, that's the only thing that we have so far. But even though you have this factor of 25, when you look at the single electron signal at very low energy, for instance, when you look at dark photon, where the signal is just one peak at the given energy of the dark photon. And when you probe at uh, below 5G EV, uh, you see that even though um, uh, Sensei has a 25 times better background at our upper limit, uh, we still are competitive with them because that's just the nature of germanium having lower trash, uh, a lower energy, a lower gap energy than silicon and also a, a smaller energy per pair uh, to create an electron pair. So I, from this, we think that germanium will be an interesting um, target to, um, uh, to do these searches, the, these type of church searches. So at the same time, uh, we did some progress in trying to understand what, uh, what kind of background we have to fight against. Now it's clearly we we were um, we know that we can improve our resolutions and and improve our, our our bias so we will be able to improve our resolution and be able to to disentangle the 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 noise blob in our data which has probably a very strong component from noise from just readout noise from real electron signal. 
uh, uh, we are right now we're looking at the, de the delta to try to, de to to separate the two hypotheses. Uh, since we can operate the detector at low and high voltage, uh, you can see whether a component of the of the spectrum is affected by the 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 bias with look uh, uh, amplification or not. And from this, it's quite clear that, for instance, the background uh, above 25 EV is uh, due to uh, heat, what we call heat only events, so event without ionization. Uh, these events are still not understood. Uh, what happens below 20 is 25 EV is, is still being uh, uh, studied. And, uh, but already the levels are, 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 at, are, are low enough. The upper limit on these uh, populations is, are good enough so that it, uh, we, we can have competitive limits out of that. Now, what, what we also are working on is that we, uh, our detector differ from the CDMS1 that is that by our heat sensor, our heat sensor is sensitive to the real thermal energy, while the CDMS uh, sensor are sensitive to uh, out of to uh, thermal phonons. So one thing that is of interest is to check whether the, this behavior at low energy and this noise, this heat only noise, is also the same in in when you look not at phonons but uh, at thermal phonons, but at thermal phonons which come from different at different process uh, level of, of uh, the, the breakdown of energy into uh, to heat. And we have, uh, during that run, we had a detector with a uh, high impedance uh, TES detector uh, of a new design. Uh, and this uh, is not an NTD, it's sensitive to, uh, to uh, a thermal phonons. And of course, we want to. We, we this detector was, uh, was operated. It had a resolution of not 1.6 eV, but 5 eV, which is already enough to really put to to probe what is happening to the heat-only background um, in the 100 eV scale and and, if, and and all the way down to 30 eV scale. And it will be interesting to see uh, what kind of uh, background this detector sees when it looks not at a thermal but a thermal phonons. So this is uh, this physics analysis is, is ongoing. So in conclusion, I presented our our searches that we are doing in uh, Edelweiss with the germanium detectors. Uh, presented what are the objective, what we think we can achieve in order to probe this sub GV region uh, with nuclear recall, but also for electron recall. Uh, we are progressing toward our goal and, and uh, what is interesting is that these progress uh, are accompanied with, with uh, significant uh, enough physics paper and, um, and of course we are working on ionization resolution, phonon resolution, um, high voltage and uh, also uh, we're trying to understand our, what we call our heat only event uh, background. And um, in the longer term is to, to try to deploy the one kilogram array, which would be, um, uh, would be able to probe the, the 10 to the minus 43 centimeter square uh, cross section. If you want to go much beyond that, then you would need a much better environment and, and, and much larger payload and then we, would probably need to, well, we, we certainly need to move away from LSN to, and, and try to, to find some place in a, an environment like Snow Lab. But right now our priority is to develop the techno, techno technology to uh, achieve the uh, detector performance that uh, should provide uh, interesting measurement in the, in the years to come. And that's, okay, so that's, uh, so thank that's what you. I had to say. <laughs> thank you very much, Jules. Um, are there any questions? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Ah, okay, okay. Well, I'm starting. I ah, know. Okay, Fabrice, go ahead. 
Oh, I didn't want to be first. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I, I'm not an expert of this. I was just surprised you never mentioned the, the term squid or to uh, all your temperature readouts are not done with squid. Is that no, a strategy no, no, or is it technical? Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's much simpler than squid. What we are doing is uh, NTD is just, you see this small square there, the, the small square there, that's the sensor. It's just a resistance, a, a chunk of germanium which has been doped with uh, neutron, uh, with dope uh, with neutron, and therefore its resistance is in the order of, of uh, it's a a, meg, uh, a megom resistance, and it it's um, so this technology is is, uh, is is I would say old school. I mean, you, you don't need squid; you just need to measure the resistance. Uh, and and that's why, um, so we, we have the problem of having a high, a high impedance readout. And this is, uh, well, in squid, it's a low impedance readout. So you don't have the same problem, but, um, but we can, we, we believe that with high impedance readout, and especially now that we, we, uh, we have these uh, hemped uh, amplifier with, 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 which can be, uh, which can lower the capacitance, then uh, we can get the resolution needed to get there. So we don't have squid, we just have high impedance readout. Charge, Perfect. of course, our charge also is high impedance. Okay. Are there any other question? If not, who is at TLSM right now? What, uh, like all the big uh, FID, where are they? Uh, they are in storage underground, hmm. but we, we, and we kept, uh, we kept uh, in that, in the present, in the run that just ended this summer, uh, we kept uh, for 800 grams for reference and for also studying the heat only background and so yeah. on. And, uh, and uh, but these detector, we, we, we are, well, we don't, uh, we don't see how we could really use them to, to get into the subject region. Mm -hmm. and, okay. uh, but they eat only we, for the red and the FID is compatible or do you see? Uh, that's why we also kept them is we want to see how these heat only background scale with detector size. We have 100 gram, 800 gram detector. We also uh, have a 200 gram detector and then we have this 30 gram detector. We want to know whether, oh, okay. uh, how, the, how this scale. So it's- And the NTD is glued the same way on all of three type. Uh, yes, except that now we glue the NTD not on the electrode, but we glue it so that it touches the glue chat. The, the, you, um, it's not glued on the electrode, it's glued on the germanium directly. And okay. this is good for high voltage, well, this holds the high voltage, but it's also good for having more uh, phonons going into the NTD. And that's one of the way we increase the uh, the sensitivity of the, the sensors. Okay, I see an end up, uh, Serge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for a very good talk. It was very interesting. I have few a few questions. Like um, I see on this slide seventeen, uh, there is a clamps with the holes on, on the center uh, above the crystal. Does it mean that you somehow hold the crystal with the balls of the? Um, yes, we have crystal? sapphire. We have, yes, we have sapphire balls, and the, these holes are in front of sapphire balls. Mm -hmm. And it somehow help you to uh, take away all these like a cracks events uh, from from the crystal. Yes, like this tests? is yeah yeah exactly. This is the kind of of test, uh, uh, and you see that. This detector on one side, it has sapphire balls and on the other side, it has uh, Teflon, Teflon clamps. And uh, we, we used to have Teflon clamps and we used to think that the Teflon clamps were the principal source of these heat only events. Mm -hmm. So we've replaced, we have detector where we replace these clamps with sapphire balls and, 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 and but we, we could not get, but that was not enough to get rid of the heat only events.
and yeah. for questions of, of detector performance, uh, uh, we get better results in terms of resolution on detector where, where we still have a, at least some Teflon clamps on one side and uh, some and sapphire ball on the other one. Interesting. But uh, and, yes, the, the, the question of how you, you, you hold your detector and, and it's, it's, yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, and then another question, small one. Uh, how do you glue uh, NTD to um, to crystal by epoxy or by silicone oil, for example, or silicone? It's concrete? epoxy. It's uh, epoxy glue. And last question that probably is somehow also related to this only heat e events. Um, what kind of purity, chemical purity of your uh, germanium um, crystal? Because uh, it's can if it's like a high purity. Germanium probably you will not enough uh, like a charge carrier when you need it. So what kind of uh, crystal quality you use and maybe uh, this um, only heat even somehow also depend on the on this impurity levels that you have inside. Uh, what we have is ten to uh, ten to the nine impurity imbalance. Um, so this very high purity, but. What do you mean by char I don't see how if your detector is very pure? Yeah, so maybe when, when you have extremely pure detector, it somehow also will affect your like even um, quenching factor for the nuclear recoiling for the electron recoil. So just just wondering, are you planning to perform any kind of investigation in, in that direction as well? Just to, uh, to see uh, what kind of quality of crystal is actually required to this very, very low energy threshold in your spectrum research? Well, so far our measurement, well, when you do these measurement, when you, when you see the, 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 the plus like uh, the discrimination plot, when you, you, you see that you can check whether your nuclear recoil band as appears where you expect it from the measurement at, at uh, purely ionization measurement done in, in conventional germanium detector. And it does so to a uh, very good precision. So there's not much room for uh, bad behavior there in terms of uh, um, not getting the charge out correctly. Uh, we can check that we do have the proper slope of, of, of 3 V per uh, 3 um, electron volt per pair. Uh, we can we can also check, there are ways for us to check how bad is the trapping inside of the detector, how, how many charges were, are we losing, because this affects directly the resolution on the peaks and uh, are trapping uh, f uh, the trapping fa fraction that we get or is consistent with uh, uh, the simulation we have we study the, um, the the charge transportation uh, charge transport inside the detector and compare that with resolution and so far we don't see any big mystery um, we've done some comparison with some detector with different uh, quality, um, but not in terms of heat only events. But heat only events, the, the problem is that you, it's not that you are missing some charge. It's not a tail of events. It's really a clear cut population where these events simply don't have any ionization. And they go all the way up to, uh, uh, to uh, tens of KE. I see. I see. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Alan. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a question. It might be a little bit out of topic. Uh, so for measurements like that with rare events and extremely low background and many other challenges, uh, to what extent cosmogenic activation can harm the measurement? Uh, I, I mean, are you taking into account these radioactive impurities induced by exposure to cosmic rays? Yes, uh, we, and uh, Siga is, is smiling because she wrote the paper on, 
on our study of cosmic activation and for instance tritium is we we, we could see in our big detector uh, the tritium component inside the uh, tritium and used by exposure to a cosmic ray while the detector were being built and shipped to uh, the uh, to uh, our lab um, except that we know that these type of contaminants okay now in in the KD range we have a good measurements uh, of such uh, of such event now what is more discussed today is is uh, whether you would have effect at low energy like gram stralone which would add a component and uh, um, or um, plasma plasma uh, signals and so on uh, a kind of exotic uh, response um, which uh, are currently being debated not well not only in Edelweiss but also in in, the, uh, in the super CDMS um, but are heat only I mean uh, the, the 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 cosmogenic activation background in our big detector it, it was at, at the level of point one event per kilogram per day. Now, if you look at uh, the scale uh, in the the um, the data, uh, okay, no, it's not easy to see it from here. But we are at uh, thousands of event per kilogram day backgrounds, which are way beyond. Uh, what you could expect from cosmogenic activation, just straight Compton tail going down and, and, and even electron recoil, it would be hard to find an intense beta ray source, very low energy. So, so that's, uh, I don't think cosmic activation as we have measured it uh, as we have constrained it could explain these type these these kind of events okay thank you okay are there any other questions is the kl ratio on slide 19 equal before and after the activated data i didn't i wasn't able to to see that the KLM no, ratio? 19 19 19 um, before and after the pre and the post it should be except that the resolution and the binging yeah looking like this it, i don't know maybe because the the y axis are slightly different one is going to 6000 another 600 so i was not anyhow yeah it's just question. the scale yeah and it just counts per day per kev but you don't yeah, um, the plot was adjusted so that uh, the, the resolution has changed because uh, the first data was taken in January. In fact, uh, a lot of it was taken on the January 1st. So the, the, the detector, the price to temperature was not even regulated. So the resolution is not as good, but, but you can see the peak and, and you can do physics with it while you can do a calibration. And the other one is narrower. But the, the, L, the, the KLM ratio, we, we did check the KLM ratio and, and found it to yes, be uh, according to literature and, and we're happy to that. Uh, no, yeah, it was uh, just a naive question because I, mm, I was- No, it's, it's quite, yeah, yeah. I, I really like these peaks because you can do a lot of um, detector study and, and, and be sure that your efficiency as a function of energy is, is, is correct. You can even see the effect of the Fano factor um, on, on the resolutions. And so it's, it's quite nice. Okay. And you only kill your experiment for, well, you, you only kill your experiment for a couple of, uh, of, uh, of weeks. So if you have time, it's, it's fine. So are there any other questions or comments? If not, I would like to thanks Jules again. Thank you very much. And well, uh, I well, will wait for, for, for your slide. <laughs>
yeah, I can <laughs> I can send them right after and thank yes, Ron. I'm sorry I was not able to uh, to. It will take a long time before I, we we can travel back to uh, North America. So <laughs> thanks for giving me a, a little glimpse of uh, Don't tell me. Sudbury. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you very and, much. I uh, hope that all goes well with, with the, uh, yeah. the oh. in the special circumstances. Hopefully next time we'll be live in person <laughs> and not remote, but still good. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Have a good day a and night and whatever. I am in the same time zone as you are, so yes. <laughs> you shouldn't be confused. <laughs> no, but sometimes I'm confused. <laughs> you know, I'm always confused.